Hello, everyone. Welcome. I hope you're all having a wonderful day so far. I'm here for the Not Too Shabby Shop today. I'm going to be making a couple of slimline cards using stamps intended for your standard A2 sized cards, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. I have a beautiful stamp set from Trinity Stamps. This one is called Blooming Bunch, and I have the coordinating die. I love a beautiful floral stamp set. This smaller stamp set is from Picket Fence Studios, and it's called A World of Octobers. And I just love the beautiful pumpkin image in this set, as well as the sentiments. I'm also going to be using a few slimline dies from Trinity Stamps. I'll have all of the product links listed below, as well as over at my blog, if you're interested. So let's start with card number one. I'm going to stamp out this beautiful stamp onto a piece of white cardstock. This is Nina Solar White. It's a huge stamp that will fill the complete front of your A2 sized card. But we are going to make this work on a slimline card, and the size is 8.5 by 3.5. I'm also going to stamp every single butterfly that came in this set. They're so pretty. This set doesn't come with sentiments. But that's all right. You can use a sentiment from another stamp set, or you could leave it without a sentiment and just use it as a note card. So this is a piece of 80 pound Nina Solar White. I like to use the lighter weight when I'm going to be using my Copic markers, just because it allows the ink to blend easier within the fibers of this thinner piece of cardstock. And I'm going to stamp everything up with some Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. This is a great ink for using with your Copics. I do stamp this up several times, but I'm only going to be showing you one stamping. And here it is, all ready to go. I do allow it to dry for about a minute, just because I did stamp it several times. I'm going to do some quick Copic coloring in this video. This is a fun technique, and I'm leaving a lot of white space around my images. So I'm basically starting with the lightest color, and I'm just doing little flick marks out toward the end of the petal. And then I come in with my darker and darker Copic markers as I go along. And then I come in with my lightest again, just to kind of smooth everything out. I don't want it to be too smooth because I like to see the stripes or the flick marks. While I have my yellows and browns out, I'm going to go ahead and color in some of the butterflies with these same colors. And as I said, I'm just leaving a lot of white space on these different flowers and the butterflies. I love this combo of Copic markers. It's just a soft bluish green. It's BG72 and BG75. And again, I'm going to color a few of the butterflies with these same markers. But look how simple and fast this coloring is. And now for a few purple. Copic markers. I'm trying to make this look like a fall time bouquet. I'll list all of the markers I'm using over at my blog if you're interested in knowing what I used. I also love that this set has the dies for these beautiful butterflies. These look kind of tricky to fussy cut out, so I was very happy to have those. All of my greenery are going to be different combinations of green Copic markers. I love these soft green ones that I'm using here. On these leaves, I'm going with a little bit more of a traditional look of greens, a little more bright. Next, I'm going to use some beautiful olive toned markers on this leaf. And then I'm even going to use some browns or some earth tone Copic markers on this little sprig right here. Here it is all cut out. I love that it cuts out the interior of the flowers and leaves too. It's so delicate and pretty. I pulled out a piece of red cardstock. This is from Gina K Designs and it's called Tomato Soup. It's just the perfect red for your fall time cards. And I'm going to stamp out the sentiment. This one says, I'm so glad that I live in a world with Octobers. I think that is from Anne of Green Gables if you're familiar with Ellen Montgomery's books. That's a quote from Anne of Green Gables. So I'm going to put some anti-static powder down first and then ink this up with some Versamark ink. 
This is a very clear and sticky ink. And then I can pour over my white embossing powder. I'll melt this, and it just pops off of this pretty red cardstock. I love the effect of this. And then I can just wipe off the anti-static powder that's left over. Okay, now for a scary part. <laughs> I'm going to cut my image in half. I have the red cardstock there just so I can see where the edge of the card is because I'm going to put it right on the edge of the card. So here we go. I'm going to cut it right in half. And this is a great technique for making your stamp fit on a slimline card. Just cut it in half, and then I'm going to put half of it at the bottom. And making sure that the bigger piece is at the bottom, because I don't want it to be top heavy, because your card will look out of balance. And I am popping it up with some foam squares. And then I can just cut off the excess. And then my second piece is going to go up at the top. And it just makes the card look full and complete. I think it's so pretty. If your stamp set is a little bit smaller, you can just stamp it out several times and add it to the front of your slimline card. It will work just as well. There we go. Now I can add a few of the butterflies. But first, I'm going to glue this down to a piece of craft card stock. And these are all. Trinity Stamps slimline dies that I use to cut out these pieces. And now for my butterflies. Some I'm going to adhere down flat with some liquid glue. And then some I'm going to pop up with more foam squares. My jewel picker is getting kind of old. It doesn't stick as well, so it doesn't pick up the pieces very good. But I find when that happens, I can just kind of peel off. It's usually glue that's stuck on there, and I can just peel off the layer of glue that's stuck on the top of it, and it starts working again. I think craft cardstock is another great cardstock for fall time cards. I mean, you can use it all year round, it's just charming and beautiful, but it really fits fall time. And now for my last little butterfly. I'll use some dot liner to attach this card panel onto a white card base. And again, both of my cards are going to be three and a half by eight and a half. Then I'm using some beautiful Trinity Stamps bling. These are called boiled sugar, and they're just perfect for floral images because they look like little dew drops. But I'm going to put several of them down the front of my card. I find with my slimline cards, I use a lot more sequins and little beads and things like that. Just requires more. <laughs> the glue goes on opaque, but it will dry clear, and all you'll see are the pretty little droplets. And now I can pour the rest of them back into the little container. I love these containers that the Trinity Stamps bling comes in. They're just so handy. And here is a kind of close-up look at my card. With the slimline cards, I can't zoom in like I do with my A2 sized cards. OK, card number two, we're going to fit this teeny tiny stamp onto a slimline. Again, this is Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. And I'm going to cut these images out. So I'm just stamping them all on this one piece of paper first. The second stamp is a cluster of leaves. It's so pretty. And then I'll flip it over and fill in the bottom of it. And then there's even single leaves that come in the set. And I'm just going to fill up a rectangle of leaves. I'm going to do the same technique, the flicking technique, to color in this pumpkin. I'll start with my lightest color first again. And then I'll start coloring with progressively darker colors. And I'm using the same colors I did on my first card. 
and I can quickly color in the leaves. I color in the leaves on my second panel off camera because it's just the same coloring, very simple, no shading at all. I'm using the same green Copic markers to color in these leaves as well. My favorite Copic marker lately is this BG72. I don't have a piece of cardstock this color, so I'm just using the Copic marker to color in the edges of this panel. And it looks just stunning with the yellows and the greens of these two cardstocks. This is another Gina K Designs cardstock, and it's called Sweet Corn. Another perfect <laughs> fall time cardstock. And I'm going to attach it to my images. So when you have smaller images and you want to fit them on a slimline card, it's great to frame them out like this. And then it doesn't matter how small your images are. This middle frame is where my sentiment is going to go. I'm just going to cut off the excess. This whole panel, I'm going to pop up with some Arteza foam tape. I put a lot of tape down just to ensure that it won't sag when it goes through the mail. Now I can peel off the release paper and add it to this cute little scalloped panel. So I wanted to use the sentiment that came in this small stamp set, but it just didn't fit inside this square. So I'm going to use a Hello die cut, and I cut it out three times from black cardstock. I'm going to glue these together. This will just give it some substance and a little bit of dimension. I'll kind of wiggle them in place until they are perfectly aligned. I like how the black cardstock of this die cut matches the black lines of my stamped images. It's going to look really pretty in front of this orange panel. But before I adhere it to the card, I am going to stamp a little sentiment. This one just says fall. And I put it in my Misty just in case I were to mess up <laughs> at this point, that would be sad. And now I can just glue down my Hello die cut. Next, I'm adding some confetti pieces. I'm just picking out the gold and the green ones. I love creating slimline cards lately. If you haven't given it a try yet, I would highly recommend you do so. They're just fabulous. They're really fun to send out into the mail and receive. There's just a lot more card to them. I really like that there are a lot more slimline dies on the market. And now I can pour my sequins back into the bag. I store all my sequins in their original packaging and I just toss them in a little drawer <laughs> that I have, but it works. I don't have that many, but you don't need a lot. <laughs> Now to attach my panel to a white card base, I just used a little bit of dot liner on that. And here is my finished card. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to check out the Not Too Shabby Shop. I have a 10% off coupon code for the Not Too Shabby Shop listed in the description below. Have a wonderful day everyone. Bye.